Tonight, the battle for number one. Appalachian State holds it. James Madison wants it. Both teams squared off last season in the NCAA playoffs. But with 22 seconds left in the game, James Madison would fumble on the Mountaineers' nine-yard line, costing the Dukes a game and a dream of a national championship. Appalachian State won by one point. This season, the fifth-ranked Dukes are taking aim at Appalachian State again, hoping to upset the three-time national champions. Stay tuned. We've got the rematch next. It's a perfect night for football in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And a lot is on the line as James Madison sets their sights on the top team in the land. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Murphy, and welcome to CNA's coverage of CAA College Football, our second game of the night on the network here. We welcome you in, and we have a special one for you tonight. Three-time defending national champion Appalachian State, the number one team in the country, on the road, taking on the James Madison Dukes. They are ranked number five. And, folks, when I tell you these two teams, well, they have a history. It was last season in November, the first round of the playoffs when they last met, and JMU loses by a point in that one in the game. They thought they should have won. They dominated in every facet of the game as you look into the numbers, but a fumble with 22 seconds left inside the 10-yard line of the Mountaineers cost them a chance to advance and cost them a chance at a national title last season. So this team has been waiting for this moment since November, and certainly we have been as well. So for more on this football game, let's go upstairs to the booth to the two guys that will call the game. It's Scott Graham and John Ritchie. Guys? Well, thanks, Murph. And this ball game is one of excitement that really has been building, as you say, since last year. It certainly is building here this week. The crowd is nuts coming into this game. Yeah, this, this last week was crazy. This week is even crazier. There's no parking. Everything's purple and yellow. Both of these squads have outstanding fans. Today should be a lot of fun for everyone involved. Both of these squads also have outstanding quarterbacks. We're going to see two of the best at what they do, a very specific style on display here tonight. That's right, Scott. Both these guys are Walter Payton Award candidates. They're both keystones of potent option attacks. Armonte Edwards is well known for being able to make people miss or just plain run faster than defenses. You'll see him today buy some time with his supreme athleticism in the pocket to get the ball downfield to his deep receiver core that's constituted by nine wide receivers today. One of the things they don't do, though, is throw the ball very often. They keep it in the hands of their quarterback, and that's what we saw this James Madison team do here last week on CN8 in their win over UMass. They gave it to their quarterback, and he certainly got the job done. Rodney Landers, what a great game. He had over 200 yards on the ground last week. He's an oxymoron in college football, a bruising quarterback. He's over 220 pounds, but when he's asked to throw the ball like he did last week, he was four for six. You'll see right here, Beautiful touch on this pass to Kirby Long for the touchdown. This guy can do it all, Scott. Uh, he absolutely did it last week, putting his team in a position right now to take on this number one team in the country. So here we go again. You've got two teams that have been at each other a couple of times last year. James Madison felt like they walked out with the short end of the stick, and you've got the number one team in the country on display here tonight. I'll tell you two things. One, there's a lot of emotion riding high. Number two, this is the game of the night in FCS football. Number one. One and number five, Appalachian State and James Madison. We're back with a kickoff here on CNA in just a moment. Today's game is brought to you by West German BMW. West German BMW. WG, two letters say it all. By Transamerica. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid. And by Black & Decker. Powerful solutions from Black & Decker. Well, you've got just about a perfect night for football. 68 degrees, hardly any wind, clear skies. It's actually by the time we get to the third, fourth quarter, going to start feeling a little bit like football weather here tonight at the end of a perfect day in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And now time for this evening's Golden Arm Award quarterback file brought to you by Transamerica for Appalachian State starting quarterback Armani Edwards for James Madison, Rodney Landers. These guys are two of the best in the country. Commanding these option offenses down the field. Great athletes. They won't throw the ball a lot, but watch them churn up the yards on the ground this evening. And you're seeing two guys are going to play it in a very similar fashion. Very similar styles that we're going to see on display before the night is done. 
Jerry Moore in his 20th season as the head coach at Appalachian State, the winningest coach in Southern Conference history. And now within five wins of becoming only the second active FCS coach with 200 career wins. The other side, guy who he is friendly with, Mickey Matthews, his 10th season here at JMU. He has also led his team to an NCAA championship. In fact, their title was the one right before the three in a row that came for Appalachian State. Appalachian State winning the last five here at JMU. And Dixon Wright as it teed up to kick it away. The crowd has been told that they want to get into this game quickly. Well, they've been into this thing for the better part of the last hour and a half, and they are at a fever pitch now as we come to kickoff time. Very dangerous return man. Kurt Cole Hillary is back to take the kick, and he is going to be backed up all the way to the goal line. Getting the block and finding the outside on the far side of the field to work his way out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And that's where this Appalachian State offense comes out. Led by a junior from Greenwood, South Carolina, who owns 2,800-plus career rushing yards and just one yard less than 4,400 passing yards. And he's only a junior. Armani Edwards. He is amazing. He's been an All-American the last two seasons, and this is only his junior year. From the 23. Stepping up, he got hit as he threw, but it is complete to Ben Jordan. It was Benny coming in on the hit, but Jordan makes the catch his fourth of the season for a pickup of about seven yards. Let me take a look at the backs and receivers more. Then you've got three wide receivers. Ori Fry is one starting tight end. They don't go to the tight end an awful lot through the air. And across the offensive line, not especially big. Second down, call it three. And keeping it himself. You're going to see that a lot tonight. Edwards close to first down yardage, and he'll have it out to the 34. Remember James Madison, the defensive line. Arthur Motes, a leader on that squad. The junior from Portsmouth, Virginia. We'll take a look at the linebacking set really played as a two linebacker set with Brandon and Benny and then they end up going with five different guys one of whom comes in as a weak safety in Garen Griffin one change with Darius Ramsey was a backup last week is starting this week and the hand is to Moore and he's going absolutely nowhere trying to find his way back to the line of scrimmage he'll lose three on that sweep to the far side superb job of penetration by that defensive line led by J.D. Skolnitsky right there they tried to bring Devin Moore in motion from the slot, hand it to him, coming across the formation. There was just nothing going on when you get that purple penetration into the backfield. Underneath handoff, and then Skolnitsky just beats the block of Daniel Kilgore, the right guard. On second down, and flags fly. It looked like we had some motion, perhaps, at the... Line of scrimmage before the snap of the football. Jack Winter, our referee, gets to make his first call of the night, and this one's going to go against Appalachian State. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 21, offense. Remaining second down. Robert Welton called for the foul. As you take a look at tonight's officials, led by Jack Winter. Yeah, that penalty right there is directly due to this crowd noise. When you're an offense playing with, with fans yelling in your ears, that reverberates inside that helmet. You can't hear the quarterback. They are certainly making it that way right now. On second down, another flag coming. And the throw down the middle, incomplete, just off the hands of Robert Welton, who came free out of the backfield. We'll have to await the call. This one might be going back the other way. Legal shift. Number 21, offense. Five yards, replay, second down. And once again, another offensive penalty. And John, we talked a little bit this week with Jerry Moore about that and said, is this something that you want to do? Do you want to see if you can 
you know, pump in some sound to practice, that kind of thing. He said, you know, we've been through this many times before. We played at LSU already this year. That's not something that we're going to concern ourselves about coming into this week. Right. He said in the past they pumped in the crowd noise. They pumped in the music trying to make it tough on the offense. He said, I, I want these guys to be as prepared as possible. They know how to deal with the pressure of big games. Let's just leave it at that. And they are trying to communicate now as they check off at the line of scrimmage on a third down and long for the 26. Defensive adjustment on the other side for JMU. And right back through the middle, that's a guy who knows what he's doing. And finding his way forward is Edwards. He got a lot of the yardage back. And he's going to get stopped at the 40-yard line. So Appalachian State's going to be forced to punt. They, there you saw Appalachian State just trying to spread out that JMU defense. They had five wide receivers in the game. Direct snap out of the shotgun and just let Armonte Edwards pick his spot with that zone blocking up front. Just not quite enough for a first down, but that was a great game. For Scotty McGee, the junior back, a dangerous punt return man, and Neil Young gets a good kick away. Fielded at the 23 and well covered downfield. Maybe a three, four yard return. And that's where it's going to be out of the 28 yard line. And the first offensive trip out for James Madison. The Dukes are led by their senior quarterback. As you said, kind of an oxymoron, a quarterback who's punishing the way he delivers the blow. <laughs> yeah. When he's running the football, Rodney Landers, 300 passing yards, 333 on the ground, and responsible for six touchdowns so far this season. First down for the 28. Play action. Looking to throw. And it's picked off. First pass of the game. Stepping right in front of it was Mark Legree, the safety. He read Landers' eyes the entire time. And deja vu all over again for the people at James Madison. They turned it over three times in the playoff game and lost. They turn it over on their first offensive play here tonight. Appalachian State crowded the box. They had nine guys in the box on this play. Looks like Rodney Landers, because he had to get it downfield, just zoomed in, focused in on Patrick Ward. Did not even see Legree there. Legree last year, mainly a special teams player, comes up with a big play right there. Big mistake by Rodney Landers. I'll see if Appalachian State can capitalize on it. They take over at the JMU 40. Corman, the wide receiver in motion, coming into the backfield. He gets the fake on the handoff, and Edwards going to get stopped after a loss of about a yard. All day, both these teams, you'll see them creeping their safeties closer and closer to the line of scrimmage because they don't want the opposing offense to rush the ball. They want to keep the ball out of these quarterbacks' hands as much as possible, so they're going to they're going to jam the box up. Whichever team is able to pass most efficiently today will have a good chance of winning. Second down and 11. Edwards wants to throw and does incomplete. He was looking for T.J. Corman. It's interesting. We talked about the depth of wide receivers that there are. Corman is senior out of Beaufort, North Carolina, is one of them. But for their first two games coming in it tonight, all nine wide receivers combined at 15 receptions. Yeah, they they haven't had to pass the ball a whole lot. They, their their game is rushing the football with our Monty Edwards, Devin Moore, Robert Weldon. Third down and 11, and flags once again. Center Brett Irving called for a false start. So the third offensive penalty here in less than four minutes. Yeah. Once again, that's that's crowd noise right there. That's crowd noise. And the fact that Brett Irving is starting for the first time this year. Both the center and both guards are replacing all Americans for Appalachian State up front from last year. So right now, they got to get that inside secured up. The center, Brett Irving, both guards, Kilgore and Asatelli need to step up make plays be consistent to get this rushing attack going the direction that they want it to go four wide receivers on third down at 16 and more of the lone setback 
They've got to get it down to just about the 30-yard line. Edwards buying some time. And knocked down. He escaped not once but twice, but ultimately could not get away from the final wave that came his way. And Arthur Motes chasing him to the near side of the field puts him back across the 50-yard line. Arthur Motes has played the best on the D-line so far this season. The other defensive end, Abdul uh, Hassan Abdul Wahid, really had the pressure. It looked to me like he was held, and that allowed Armonte Edwards to escape to the outside. You saw the hold right there. Then J.D. Skolnitsky comes in, then, then the reinforcements. Young's kick. Going to be fielded. Oh, wow. Talk about taking a big-time chance. That's exactly what Scotty McGee did. Uh, he had coverage right in front of his face and elected to catch the ball. So JMU is going to start off inside their own 15-yard line. First quarter scoreless here in Harrisonburg. Number one visiting number five, and we are in the first quarter. A couple of early scoring opportunities for Appalachian State, or at least a couple of opportunities for a drive. And have been turned away. Now James Madison with this huge crowd behind them. After turning it over on their first play from scrimmage, will take over the football. Just across their own 13-yard line. That's going to be a game in the backfield to Eugene Holloman. We didn't see him here last week, but he is back again. The senior from Virginia Beach with a gain of two to the near side. Taken down by D.J. Smith. Holloman's been banged up. A couple weeks ago, he had a thigh bruise. He didn't tell the coaches about it. He was trying to play through, it, through that. It kept getting worse and worse. Now he missed last week. He could be a little rusty. He practiced Wednesday and Thursday. We'll see how he does tonight. Second down and eight. A three wide receiver said it looks like Landry's checking down at the line of scrimmage. Oh my, lost the handle on the ball. He's going straight backwards and he is dropped at the one. That is a loss of 15 yards juggling the ball. And Rodney Landers has his team buried now just outside its own one yard line. This was ill fated from the get go. No one blocked Tony Robertson off the edge. That's a breakdown. I don't know if, if the offensive line didn't get the adjustment that Rodney Landers made before the snap or what. But you saw coming underneath, Eugene Holloman went away from the play. And that's exactly where the defensive end came scot free. So now you're in risky territory here. Got to try to get your puncher a little bit of room at the very least. So Landers is thinking about right now. Trying to turn a corner. He got hit. And stopped briefly by Banks. It was Gilbert who came on to make the final stop. And James Madison will be forced to punt it away. Well, he got a little room for his punter there. That's just not the situation you want to be in when you're an option team. Now, due to injuries, Andy Smith, a redshirt freshman, has been doing the punting. One of the things you were noting last week was it is taking him a while to get rid of the football. He doesn't have that option right now. No, not at all. Last week he was super slow on his get up. I watched him warm up. He was kicking the heck out of the ball, and his get up looked a little faster. They've worked on it this week. It wasn't that quick right there. They almost got a piece of it. The punt comes off the side of his foot. It is not a good one. And this is going to be fantastic field position for Appalachian State as they are going to spot the football right at the 30-yard line. Tough going for the home team here in the first quarter. We'll see if the defending champions can capitalize when we come back. But for Armonte Edwards and his teammates of Appalachian State, this is the best field position they've had to start this first quarter on what is already their third possession. They are at the 30-yard line. And trying to take advantage of laying this field position war in the first quarter. That give to the outside and falling ahead for positive yardage. Devin Moore is going to get a pickup of five yards on first down. Looked like Appalachian State guessed right. JMU guessed wrong. They brought some heat from the secondary, bringing their safety down and their defensive end off the edge to the left. Unfortunately, Appalachian State ran into the right. That's why they got five yards right there. We're coming into the game with 117 yards on the ground, including a yards per carry average of almost seven. Edwards stopping and looking, and now ducking and running. Big block. First down yardage. Moore 
through an unbelievable block to spring his quarterback to the far side and he dances out of bounds at the 13. This is where Armonte Edwards really gives you problems. He was looking downfield, nothing there. He's so quick to take off with the ball and you saw that block, crunching block right here. Spring him. Oh! Beautiful, DJ, that's football right there. DJ Brandon got sent flying. Well, they're in the red zone. They've been perfect from the red zone to begin the year. Edwards running the option. And he's inside the 10 down to the 7. This team is 6 for 6 in red zone opportunities to start the year. That's really nothing new because last year they scored on their first 24 trips into the red zone. 19 touchdowns and 5 field goals. They didn't get stopped in a red zone opportunity until game 6. It's incredible. That guy right there is just fantastic. Whenever he does anything on the field, it's special. Second down and four. This time it was running back. Bagging into the end zone for the touchdown is Moore. It's only fitting he threw the block that got the first down. And he gets his second rushing touchdown of the year as Appalachian State takes the first quarter lead. Appalachian State, great job of mixing it up. We talked to Jerry Moore, head coach of Appalachian State. He said, hey, when teams are stopping any aspect of, of our option, you know we're going to have a plan to do something else. Right there, they just handed it off on that dive. JMU was not expecting it. Honed in on Armonte Edwards. They forgot about Moore. And Mataris with the extra point. They stretch the lead out to seven. They take advantage of the short field, taking just four plays in a minute, 35 seconds to cash in. And you got the crowd here saying, well, you know, I, not a good start. Wow, just solid blocking up front. This, this offensive line is undersized, but they are athletic. They're getting on their blocks, shielding them just enough to allow Devin Moore that beautiful lane into the end zone. Good job of keeping his legs churning. Good eyes. Kind of slithered through that, that hole, a tiny path made by his offensive line. Well, he had plenty of time to look and find those spots, too, and showed that good vision in getting in. So the Appalachian State team, it comes in with a record of one and one. Kind of a, a similar start as you take a look at the numbers on the scoring drive to what JMU did. They had a blowout loss in game one against number seven LSU, then beat up on Jacksonville in week two, and they were off last week. Right, and, and that could pay dividends this week. Last week, they corrected mistakes from their game against LSU and Jacksonville, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday. They were already on to uh, the JMU squad. This is two weeks ago, excuse me. So they've been covering JMU for an additional half a week on top of what JMU has been able to prepare for them. Right now, Jerry Moore's got to be pretty happy with the way his team has cashed in early. The special teams has done a good job. They'll try to bury him once again. It is McGee to field the kickoff at his five. Got a lane. And great speed to the outside. Good pursuit. He shoved out of bounds by Travis Dowda. But not until he gets to the 40-yard line, a 35-yard return. That could have easily been a late hit out of bounds, but that was a middle wedge. Scotty McGee busted it right up the middle, followed his blockers, and yet then used his awesome speed to get to the corner. But Appalachian State's a tough team to outrun. They have a lot of great athletes, too. Uses his speed, switches the ball nicely, then turns on the burners. That's a late hit right there. I think that's what the head coach was talking to the officials about in a pretty animated way on the sideline. <laughs> First down from the 40. Not much has gone right offensively for JMU here in the first quarter. And the give is going to be to Griff Yancey. He'll get a couple of yards out to the 42. I'll give you a chance to kind of set up the offense where we haven't had an opportunity to do. Yancey the starting tailback. He'll see time back there along with Holloman and Sullivan. Kirby Long had a touchdown catch last week. And the offensive line did a very good job last week against UMass's defense. Setting up Rodney Landers to do pretty much what he wanted to do throughout that game. A 
Not second down. Holloman. That's a good drive after getting initially hit as he gets it out near the 48. Appalachian State defense has done a good job so far this year and a good job in general against JMU. Lewis and Roberts and the guys on the outside. Roman had 20 tackles in the playoff game against JFU, JMU last year. And you see the defensive backfield. Mark Legree has already made one big play with the interception in this one. Watch Rodney Landers keep it here. Third and three. Oh, you read it. You saw it. And so did everybody else. As Landers has a first down into Appalachian State Territory. You know, when a first down's on the line, when a game is on the line, JMU is going to make sure number seven is taking care of the ball. Rodney Landers, there was never any doubt right here. Reading his blocks, great chop block by Eugene Holloman on the edge. That's what allowed Rodney Landers to gain that first down right there. That's his senior right there, giving himself up so his quarterback has an opportunity to make a play, and that's exactly what they did as they get their first first down of the game. From the 45, same way, same lead block, not the same result. But Landers, with some creativity, does manage to make it into a positive gain of nearly four yards. Yeah, they tried to go back in, back to the well. And Appalachian State did a great job at shutting that well closed, throwing a rock over the top of the well. There was no well. Rodney Landers, though, stuck his foot in the ground, cut it back against the grain. Nice gain of three or four yards, but brought down by Jacques Roman, their all-world middle linebacker. He was certainly all-world when these teams played last year. He had one of the great games anybody could ever have in that playoff game. And he got a little design play that is sniffed out immediately. What a terrific play staying at home. Again, it's Mark Legree. That was a slow developing play, wasn't it? Kirby Long had nowhere to go. Appalachian State was just kind of hanging there. The ball's out. Rodney Landers waiting, waiting for Kirby Long. I don't think that timed up well at all for JMU. Maybe the ball was snapped a little bit early. Kirby Long had no chance at all. Legree stayed at home and just drove him back out of bounds. It's third down and a long three. They've got to get it to the 35. He's got time. Now he doesn't. And gets away. Could be a big play. Incomplete. For a moment, it looked like he was going to have one of those miracle plays you read about. But Landers couldn't quite set his feet to find long downfield. That's going to bring up fourth down. That's exactly right. What Rodney Landers needs to do with all that athleticism is keep in mind his fundamentals of throwing the ball. Right here, looking, looking. No one's open. Somehow avoids that sack right there, rolls out. It's tough to get your flips hipped around, your hips flipped around, sorry, and get that ball into a, a throwing position with your shoulders square to your receiver. His feet weren't set. As a result, he tried to gun it with just his arm. That's why it went in the dirt. Now Smith going to try to bury Appalachian State. And that ball is going to trickle out of bounds. He got inside the 20 and down to the 11-yard line. And that's where the Mountaineers will take over with 3.29 to go here in the first. Catch CNH Your Morning weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. This Monday, Your Morning welcomes TV guides Damian Holbrook. Get you up to speed on all things Emmy night. From the red carpet gossip to the winners, losers, and surprises. CNH Your Morning. It's Monday at 6 a.m. thankful that the sun is now down. I was down there on the field before the game. The band members are, are not thankful for the worsted wool that they're forced to wear. I can tell you that. Now it's nice and cool, though. They're probably comfortable. In a little while, they're going to enjoy that worsted wool. Nothing developing back there, and good job defensively by Ronnell Brown along the line for James Madison. It's going to be a loss of about a yard, plus a loss of a helmet for Moore. Montrell Thomas, his sophomore, also went on the play. Montrell Thomas. He and uh, Hassan Abdul-Wahid have been competing at that defensive end spot. But there you see Ron Elmore getting penetration, getting in there, and then the rest of the purple pack just stuffing him, ripping his helmet off. Hard-fought run. 
Nothing to show for it. Hard fought game right now. Second down and 11. Corman, the wide receiver in motion, and it's Edwards keeping it to the near side. Look out. That great burst of speed to the outside. Only Marcus Haywood kept him from going further, but he just picked up 30 out to the 40 yard line. Armonte Edwards, they snap it to him and say, hey, just find somewhere to the left side of the line of scrimmage and run the ball. There's he the other gear not, right there. He was not thinking pitch. He was thinking run. His team, his his wide receivers did a great job of blocking downfield. Anytime you got a big gain like that, it's because people are working for you past the line of scrimmage. What a fantastic burst of speed. His longest run so far this year. However, not so lucky keeping the ball in the backfield. Going to be a loss for about a yard as Jamie Vetti, the freshman, did a good job of penetrating into the backfield and making sure that Moore had nowhere to go. Yeah, Jamie Vetti. lost his helmet again, by the way. <laughs> Maybe he had a strap to that thing or something. Jamie Vetti, very athletic. He is a freshman. Came in from Fork Union Prep. Now, he is super athletic. He's one of the fastest guys on that team. Runs a 4-4 in the 40 but just like any young linebacker talking to Mickey Matthews he says then he needs to tackle better he did a pretty good job there of, of grabbing some cloth allowing Arthur Motes Ron L. Brown to get in there Moore is in a lot of pain clearly as he is down on the field right now doesn't seem like it's something as simple as perhaps a cramp or something along those lines. They're playing with the ankle right now, the left ankle of Moore. So you can take a look. Talk, focusing Watch. on that left foot. Yeah. Oh. Oh, got rolled. Oh. Oh, my goodness. It got rolled. We're going to have to take a very good look at that. We'll see whether or not Moore has the ability to return, but he is in a lot of pain as he's helped off the field. Yeah, he's not putting any weight on that thing in the, in the grotesque way that thing was turned underneath underneath that pile of humanity. Let's hope he's all right. Rather than going to Welton, they're going to go empty backfield now on second down and 11. That's all the backfields you need right there, number 14. Big rush coming. Got rid of it, tipped, and picked off, and dropped. It's incomplete. That looked like you were on the inside of a pinball machine, watching that ball bounce around, and one final shot knocked it loose. J.D. Skolnitsky probably wishes he didn't have his thumbs taped right now. Armonte Edwards has some pressure in his face. Great job by Arthur Motes, getting an opportunistic chance to bat that ball down, and then Tries to help Skolnitsky yeah, I think bring he, this down and, and ends up knocking it out of there. Yeah, I think he actually broke up the ball that he tipped to his own teammate. <laughs> yeah, everyone's trying to make plays. Sometimes too many people are trying. Crowd rising up, though, now on third down and long. Big rush coming. Somehow he got out of it again. And he's got first down yardage. What a play. Armonte Edwards showing all of the athleticism that makes him so dangerous. He is into JMU territory at the 44. Fantastic play by Armonte Edwards. Terrible play by Jamie Venny. Look at this. He's right there, standing right next to Armonte Edwards. He needs to get his arms around the quarterback, get his, get his arms out of the air. Watch, look, just run right through him. That gives Armani Edwards, you know, there's no contain to that left side. That kind of speed does damage. And now the backup running back with a big burst into the ball game. And Welton's going to have first down yardage. Again, all the way down to the 32-yard line. He picked up 12 on a carry off the far side. Robert Welton is their leading rusher for this year because of the game he had uh, against Jacksonville two weeks ago. Uh, right there, you see, uh, he's, he's raw, he's athletic, he's big, he's going to run through some tackles, but he's still learning the game. You know, he's, he's just now learning to be a player, according to Jerry Moore. 
Move it tight end fry to the near side and run away from that side. And spinning down inside the 30 is Welton. He only had four more. Someone needs to fix his shoulder pad there. Yeah, Welton looks quick inside, spinning, turning, grinding out those extra yards. He's a guy who, uh, you know, his first 18 months at Appalachian State, you know, the work ethic was in question. This summer, he stayed at Appalachian for the summer, and it's really paid off. He looks a lot better this year than ever before. The coaches have a lot more confidence in him, and he's showing you why right now. Appalachian State, the play clock running down is going to call for a timeout. Now check that, that is the end of the quarter. So the quarter comes to an end. And so far, if you were expecting an offensive fireworks show, you haven't seen it. But a battle of intrigue so far in this game with a lot of emotion. And two of the top teams in America facing off here on Saturday night. The three-time defending national champs with a seven-point lead as we go to the second here in Virginia. an electric night here in Harrisonburg and the number one team of the country up by seven as we go to the second quarter and they are marching into JMU territory again a second down from the 29 for Armonte Edwards looking for a receiver and he can't get away this time Sam Daniels gets into the backfield throws him for a loss all the way back to the 42 let's check in right now down on the field with Murph Hey guys, uh, just an update on Devin Moore down here on the Appalachian State uh, sidelines. He is on the trainer's table right now. They are icing up his left ankle. He looks like he is in a lot of pain. They just removed his shoulder pads. I asked for a medical update from the training staff. They refused to give me one. I am not a doctor, but if I had to speculate, I think we'd seen the last of Devin Moore tonight. Certainly doesn't look like he's somebody fixing to come back right now. And we'll get a report later on about the condition of that left ankle. Right now, it's third down and 19. We've got to get the ball all the way to the 23. Time for Edwards. Firing, and it is incomplete. The ball bounced into the hands of Blake Elder. A little bit of a short hop thrown by Edwards, and that's going to bring on the punting unit for Appalachian State. Watching both he and Rodney Landers warm up, they were money out there without the pads on. When they don't have people on their face and they get their feet set, they throw the ball exceedingly well. Right there with pressure, took a hit right, right at the last second. Armonte Edwards is, is, is not accurate unless he has a chance to go through the mechanics of throwing the football. Young is very good at setting the ball inside the 20-yard line, and it looks like he's got another shot at it right here. Wow. Down inside the five-yard line and going to be marked at the three. I guess the right way to put it is my, my, hey, hey, Neil Young <laughs> finds his way inside the five. Neil Young. I love Neil Young. You mean the singer, not necessarily I love, the No, punter. he's a great punter. Okay. He is a great punter with hang time and accuracy. Don't forget the game you're watching with all of this great dialogue and all of CNA's college football and high school broadcasts available free to Comcast customers on video on demand. Neil Young. Neil Young is a hang time specialist for this squad. He's been very, very good. Last, last year, Appalachian State had the best net punting average in the Southern Conference. So backed up in the shadow of their own goal line. Holloman tries to work his way out, and he's not going to get a whole lot. Maybe a gain of about a yard out to the four-yard line. Fabian Lewis makes the tackle. Mickey Matthews. Got to be a little bit concerned right now about his offense, his inability to move the football. Well, in all honesty, they have not had good field position. No, not at all. You're right. But look at look at the first downs in that first quarter. Appalachian State had six, all on the ground. JMU had one when Rodney Landers took that third and three for a first. Well, if you joined us late, one turnover on the first play for JMU and another near turnover near the goal line, and now... We're going to get called back on this one and an offensive penalty. Looked like the tight end Mike Kossin moved a little bit early. Ball start. 44 offense. Half the distance of the goal. Remains 
second down. Or Charlie Newman, also a tight end. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, sometimes the noise can work against you when you're the home team. That's why you frequently see a quarterback and his teammates, you know, waving calm down with the crowd. They're fairly quiet here right now on second down. And just not a lot of room to run the football up through the middle. Appalachian State doing a good job of plugging the middle and giving Holloman no chance to get going. The time it was D.J. Smith. They're just diving up inside, trying to get some room coming out. With that option, if Rodney Landers is running it, he's going to be trying to get an edge. And with the speed of this Appalachian State defense so far in the game, he really hasn't had much of a chance to do that. On third down, Landers throwing complete. Close to first down yardage, but not quite enough. He's going to be about a yard shy. The completion was there. Doug McNeil. His route was too short. It's third and eight. Get past the sticks. Yeah, it's a completion, but what does it do for your team? That's a mistake right there by the redshirt freshman, Doug McNeil. What is bear punt? Bear punt, it's a new look that they put in this week. Just because Andy Smith really struggled with his get-off time last week, Bear punt. You see, they've got three personal protectors back there to ensure he gets this ball off. And Appalachian does not rush the punt. So it works. Fair catch, though, means it. going to be great field position again for the Mountaineers as they're going to have the ball in JMU territory at the 48-yard line. They have dominated this game despite the fact that they only lead by seven as we're here in the second in Virginia. 11.34 to go till halftime. Appalachian State sitting out a seven-point lead, and their all-world quarterback, Armonte Edwards, a big part of what's happened here so far. Armonte Edwards in that first quarter had 78 net yards rushing. If he stays on that blistering pace, he's going to have 312 for the game, Scott. Let's, let's assume that JMU will start giving him some different looks defensively, keeping contain, which they have not done, to thwart his... His attempt at going over 300 yards rushing. This guy really takes advantage of any mistakes you make defensively. He has 13 career 100-yard rushing games and seems well on his way to another one here tonight. Good field position at the 48-yard line. Straight option play. And to the outside, it is Welton on the far side of the field, dancing out of bounds. One of the 42, six-yard pickup on first down before Haywood makes the play. Boy, oh boy, that looked like JMU was trying to bait Appalachian into throwing the ball. They had everyone clustered up at the line of scrimmage. At the last second, they stemmed everyone back off the line. It worked to their disadvantage because Appalachian stayed the course, kept that option on, got that pitch out there, gained a nice seven and a half, eight yards. Six men. In that box right now, and now they bring a couple more closer to the line as Welton gets another carry, but he gets good penetration into the defensive backfield for JMU and all the way down to the 32-yard line. So he just got himself nearly another 10 and another first down for Appalachian State. Robert Welton makes some abrupt cuts right here. Zone blocking up front. He can pick and choose his hole. He does a great job of just bouncing through jump cut, jump cut, back and forth. Wow. Nice run. Big game. This was the number one offense in the NCAAs last year. They set 15 different school records. You hadn't heard of them before. Obviously, you did on opening weekend last year with that big victory upset variety over Michigan. Welton here is going to get it down inside the 30. Hit a pretty big price there for a game of just over two yards. Welton tried to cut that thing back. Felt like the JMU defense was over pursuing the front side cut. But there you see Hassan Abdul hit at his defensive end spot. Stayed at home. Shut that play down. Well, Jerry Moore's got his team. Moving the ball, positive yardage again. And second down, quarterback's keeping it himself. Making just like a running back as he found the right hole on the right side and works his way down to the 25. 
You can pretty much just snap into this guy and say, hey, do your thing. Do your thing, buddy. That's what he did there. Picking through, picking his way through. But you, you, if you watch his pad level, when he's running through the inside of that defense, he's so low, he's hard to get a beat on. The two tight ends set now on third down and about three. And now they're changing it up. These changes come from the sideline. Flag on the play, another snap of the football. It's going to go against Appalachian State. All start, 84, offense. Five yards, remains third down. Dare I say it again? Crowd noise had everything to do with that penalty. You had some cat and mouse going on. Call coming in for Appalachian from the sideline. Hey, we need to change it. We don't like the look on defense. Then JMU in turn talking, making some changes on their side of things. You got plays being called up front. Guys, you know, offensive linemen. Hey, I got him now. I got him now. That kind of thing. Sometimes with that sort of talking on the line of scrimmage, you think you heard the quarterback snap the ball, but you really did. Crowd trying to play a part again on third down. And throwing straight down the middle of the field at his first down yardage, B.J. Frazier, the sophomore, from Beaufort, North Carolina, just sat down right in the middle of the coverage, and he gets his first catch of the year. B.J. Frazier does a great job of getting enough yardage for that first down. This guy is athletic. He seems to know and understand the concept of zone defense. He did not continue to run across the formation. He set it down right in that hole. Nice throw by Armonte Edwards. Good job of getting his pads north and south and getting that first. I believe that's B.J. Frazier's first collegiate catch. So actually, in just one game last year didn't record any statistics. So they're moving again and inside the red zone once again. Option play. Boy, did he have time to pick and choose. And he gets down inside the 13-yard line. A gain of better than six yards on first down. Yeah, he did have a lot of time there. And, I, and the reason for all this time, it's almost like the game is slowed down because that Appalachian State offensive line, yeah, they're not the biggest guys in the world. But they're athletic and they're latching on to the JMU defenders. They're latching on and maintaining their blocks. And Edwards just has patience. He knows he's fast. He knows he's explosive and can burst through a hole when one develops. So taking his time is really benefiting this Appalachian State offense right now. They're doing a good job of keeping the JMU offense off the field. And hitting through the middle, it is Welton again. Sometimes it doesn't pay to get away from that first tackle. <laughs> Especially not when you're standing straight up and down like a like a tree. I would imagine that happened to you once or twice the over the course of your career. Mountains. Yeah, you know what? It it, it did more often than it should have. <laughs> you know, when you get inside and you're you're churning for extra yards, you try to spin, you get stuck halfway, you got your back to the defense, you're standing straight up and down. It's not a good thing because it's almost impossible to fall forward when you're facing the other direction. Third down and three. They've got to get it near the eight. Three wide receivers bunch to the top of your screen. And the throw back across the way is good for the touchdown. Josh Johnson in the back end of the end zone. That's the throw they tell you to never make. Well, Edwards just <laughs> made it, and they've got a chance to go up 14. That's the throw they tell you to never make, especially if you're a right-handed quarterback. Rolling to the left, throwing back across your body. Armonte Edwards is a lefty. It makes it a little bit easier. Great pass. Great job of, of Johnson getting open across the back of that end zone. Well, Vitaris with the extra point. It's good. And it's a 14-point lead for the three-time defending champs. I will say that this touchdown was due to Marcus Haywood, that free safety for JMU, getting a little bit too nosy when Armonte Edwards started scrambling. And they had all their attention focused on number 14. Nothing in my hand, nothing up my sleeve, but a 14-point lead in this one. Now for the home crowd here at James Madison, everything looking a little murky right now. 6.32 to go here till halftime and a 14-point lead for Appalachian State. 
And a touchdown hauled in by Josh Johnson, Western North Carolina's all-time leader in receptions and receiving yards in high school. Josh Johnson out there during pregame, pre-pregame, was throwing a lot of these Appalachian State guys were out on the field throwing around. Even their offensive linemen. You know, these guys like the game of football. They like just getting that ball in their hands, tossing it back and forth. He was doing an awful lot of work in the pre-pregame. Tell you what, so you, you, win, off. you win three national championships in a row. What's not to like? Right. Yeah, exactly. These guys, most of the guys on this team have only won national championships. Two guys actually played in 2004 when they didn't win, when JMU won. And JMU trying to assert itself here right now, and they do get a return from Kirby Long to get some good field position as he'll get it out to the 39. To watch Armandi Edwards kind of pulls it down, buys some time. That caused the free safety Marcus Hay Haywood to bite, can't get back in position with Johnson coming across the back of the end zone. Great play. That play was made possible by Armonte Edwards' presence on the field and his ability to scramble and buy extra time. Now tell me a little bit about that bump. The bump, the jump bump. That was, everyone's doing that now. I, that, that, I think that started like maybe after I was playing. I was never one to jump bump because I can't really jump to begin with. And the ball comes loose on the hit. JMU gets back on top of it. It was Leonard Love with a tackle. And Rodney Landers, who lost the handle on a football. So you weren't much of a bumper? I was never a jump bumper. It was something that I think Donovan used to do with, like, Todd Pinkston. I'd always be looking at it like, that's not going to it's not gonna catch on. Right there, Rodney Landers has the ball out. He was trying to pitch tried it. Tried to pitch it at the last second. Oh, that is just not a smart play. And Good job of Eugene uh, Holloman getting on that ball. Not a smart play at all. By a guy who is a very heady quarterback. But you can tell they're kind of pressing a little bit right now. Down 14. Yancey. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe one more on top of it. Gonna be a third down and long coming up. Right now they're they're kind of doing the uh, they're handing off to the, the the offset back out of that shotgun in the option. Rodney Landers is riding him and letting him keep the ball. That backside end of Appalachian State, either uh, Quavian Lewis or Tony Robertson, is now crashing down the line of scrimmage to pursue that ball carrier. Expect Rodney Landers to start keeping these and get the edge. Something he hasn't done a lot of here. He did a lot of last week. And there is a toss to the inside, kind of a gadget play for Kirby Long. He's going to get himself about three yards, but well shy of the first down. That certainly did not work the way the JMU coaches had hoped. You know, Jeff Durden, the offensive coordinator, up, up here in the box, calling plays down. Hey, I see something. I think the, uh, the little mini reverse trick play to Kirby Long might work. Appalachian State didn't bite. Well, it should be an opportunity for B.J. Frazier to return this one as he stands back at his 20. Instead, he's going to let the football take the hop, and it takes a positive hop for Appalachian State down to the 29-yard line with 4.23 to go here in the first half. Tonight's game is an exclusive presentation of CNA, the Comcast Network. Remember, by staying plugged into Comcast Cable, you're staying plugged into CNA. Otherwise, you'd have no way to see any of our local sports events or weeknight talk shows. That's something that Verizon and DirecTV may not tell you. The truth is, neither Verizon nor DirecTV carry CNA. Comcast does. You've got Comcast, you've got the game. Jerry Moore's got to be happy with the way his special teams have been performing today. And also pleased that JMU's special teams has, has not been doing very well. That penalty of five yards will be assessed on the dead ball spot. First down. Well, from the 29, moving up to the 34-yard line. And that is where Appalachian State will take over. They've got all three of their timeouts. They've got 4.23 to go till halftime. But I'll tell you what, they start thinking about putting another score on the board of any kind here before halftime. This is going to look like some kind of mountain that JMU is going to have to climb in the second half. A Mountaineers mountain. Indeed. Nearly insurmountable if they score. I don't know. You know, the way JMU has been performing offensively, this is, this is quite a mountain already. The night's getting a little bit cooler. And Edwards 
Well, I'll tell you what, it's almost like he is sitting in a recliner back there. <laughs> gets an opportunity, yeah. swivels around, and then pops out of it and yeah. gets his positive yardage. He again. just looks so smooth. Just taking his time. Just, you know, eyes upfield, eyes upfield. Taking his time. Now watch. Stick your foot in the ground. Boom. There's a big hole because JMU was over pursuing. That's what he has come to expect. Teams do that. Teams have to try to keep up with him. He's so fast and fluid. Sticks his foot in the ground. Cuts it back. Nice gain of six yards on first down. That is a very, very smart football player. A second down. Called a long four now. The clock's still running. There he goes again. Has the option. Doesn't take it. And in this case, that may not have been the right choice. Hassan Abdul ahead got there first. Gain of maybe a yard. It'll bring up third down. That was a play where Edwards should have pitched that thing. You're saying he is a very smart football player. He's a smart student athlete. I mean, he's on the Dean's list. This guy really is a cerebral player. That time... Tried to keep it a little bit too long. Wasn't able to get the pitch out. He had his back in a pitch relationship. Would have been the better choice there. Well, the home crowd that thought they'd be a big factor tonight trying to rise up again. And the throw is complete for first down. Yardage to Ben Jordan. They don't throw to the tight end a lot, but Jordan is second catch of the night and he's fifth of the season. Yeah, Ben Jordan, he is their catching tight end. Ori Fry, number 88, is their blocking tight end. Ben Jordan, that's a stick route, catches it, gets the first down. Nice throw by Armonte Edwards. I like it when guys' helmets fly off, too. We've seen a lot of helmets flying off today. A lot of helmets flying off. It's exciting. People are smacking people. That's going to be a give with an escort to the outside. Flag on the play, and that might be a hold against Ori Fry as Weldon got to the outside, got good yardage, but it's coming back. That's going to be a hold. Ori Fry held Hassan Abdul ahead right on the edge. You cannot hold on the edge. That's exactly where the refs are looking for holds. It should not be as easy as that was to gain the corner. The thing is, it looked like he might have had that corner. He might have gotten to that edge anyway without the hold. Holding. Offense. Number 88, 10 yards from the previous spot. You play first. Yeah, anytime, anytime you got you got some cloth and you pull the jersey, ooh, that's an easy call for the referees. The point of attack on a sweep, an outside zone, that, that's exactly where the refs are looking. If your arms get extended and the defender is trying to escape you, you have to just let go. Let him go. Have faith that your your, your back will have the speed to beat him to the corner. Corey Fry, a converted offensive lineman, should know that sort of thing. So first in a bunch. And ducking and running and putting his team back into position again up near midfield is Edwards. That's amazing. 14 yards on what looked like it was nothing. <laughs> this, this is amazing. And JMU has got to be upset right now with the way their defense has been containing. You see, there's no one to the outside, no one on that edge. And then just the finish, that explosive finish, he fell for five yards at the end of that run. They've yet to use a timeout as we come up on a minute and a half left now here in the half. Looking to throw this time, and he's got time to do it. Firing complete. Coco Hillary down inside the 25-yard line and out of bounds at the JMU 20. 30 yards on the pickup, and here they come again. Looking so efficient. He had plenty of time to throw that time to Coco Hillary. Last week, Coco Hillary was just about the only guy he threw it to. Got a lot of faith in him. Coming across, perfectly thrown ball. Coco, nice yards after the catch. Coco Hillary was a quarterback in high school. Now he's been converted to their M receiver, which is the guy that usually goes in motion. So they nose into the red zone again. And it's Welton, cut back running inside the 15. They just can't stop him. Down to the 11-yard line. My, what a difference between this year's game between these two squads and last year's game. Last year, JMU held the ball for over 40 minutes of clock time. This year, it's all Appalachian State. On the ground, in the air, they're doing everything right. 
Prescott. Second down. Welton falling forward near the 10. I think he's going to be a little shy of first down yardage. When Trell Thomas made the hit. Now, the timeout is going to be called for by Appalachian State. It doesn't look like it's close enough for a measurement. He's probably a good half yard shy. So you've got 48 seconds now to go here in this half. And Appalachian State uses their first timeout. Be sure to check out CN8's weekday primetime lineup. Backstage at 8. It's your call at 9. Followed by Art Finnell reports at 10. And of course, that's bracketed by Out of Bounds at 7 and 11.30. It's great entertainment, news, and talk every weeknight here on CN8. You made the trip from Boone, North Carolina, and you're making it worth it so far as Appalachian State has 212 total yards to JMU's 34 here in the first half. Yeah, JMU needs to do a lot different coming out in this second half, regardless of whether Appalachian State scores here or not. And they very well should score here. They got third and short at the 10-yard line. They're moving the ball up and down this field, up and down and up and down. It looks like JMU has no answers, defensively or offensively right now. Edwards hadn't had to throw the ball very much. He does have five completions for 66 yards right now. In this case, looks like you're in a running situation. He still have the two timeouts left with 48 seconds left in the half. And on third down, Welton's got more than a first down. Barreling toward the goal line. He stopped just shy at the two. Robert Welton is really a talent. He gets that ball, and he's just very abrupt with all of his movements. Fighting forward, fighting for yards, quick cuts. So first and goal, Welton's at it again, spinning into the end zone for the touchdown. And a fully dominant first half by the three-time defending national champions. Looks like it's going to come to an end with a three-touchdown lead. I think this crowd, not the ones that are wearing the just gold, but the ones who are wearing purple are stunned right now. Without a doubt. Darris a perfect 11 for 11. Now make it 12 for 12 on extra point attempts this year. And it is 21 to nothing, Mountaineers. I am. I, I also am stunned. I thought that this game would be up and down the field, rushing the ball. Both teams excelling. Now these are two of the top squads in all of the FCS. You got number one, number five. Number five is looking like they're not even on the, the radar right now. Good cutback. Does the rest himself. Robert Welton, you see he likes to spin a lot. That's that's great vision, great job cutting it back. Once again, over pursuit by the interior of JMU's defensive line, and Welton makes him pay for it. He's tough, he's a tough guy to bring down. 215, 220 pounds, very strong. Jerry Moore likes him a lot. He had a great spring, you know, he's physical. Appalachian State on the board again. Three minutes and 52 seconds. Couple of very big plays by who else? Armonte Edwards to keep that drive going. This is, you know, the, the way that JMU's been playing. They, they don't even look like they've they've come out to play tonight at all. They were, they, during pregame, the coaches were jumping around, the players were jumping around. They looked so motivated, so, so excited to play. It's almost like they, they burnt themselves out in the pregame. They had their equipment manager singing the national anthem. The crowd was going crazy. And now they have not converted that to the way they're playing. I think a lot of the credit might be going to the guys in the white jerseys for that. They've kind of taken them out of their game. Very true. So with three timeouts available to them, JMU will get the football back with 26 seconds left to go in the half. Oh, 26 seconds of game time away from halftime coming up at the half. Out of bounds report, our CAA preseason offensive team and a recap of one team taking another to school here in the first half. They're going to stay on the ground and 
and a cut their losses as Holloman keeps the football in on his belly. They're going to take the time out here at the 44 yard line. They'll take another look at it. But the crowd right now just not in this game right now. Well, last week, JMU was in a similar situation closing the half. We expected them to come out and throw the ball, throw it downfield, you know, be, use the clock to their advantage with incompletes, that sort of thing. They came out and ran it from for a 70 yard drive to finish off the half just utilizing that option utilizing Rodney Landers ability to get to that edge gain big yardage they were relying on the ref stopping the clock to move the chains to control the clock and keep the, the seconds from ticking away right now Rodney Landers has not been keeping the ball he's been riding the back and handing it to the back the, the backs have nothing going inside so there's no yardage out there to be had. They need to get the ball in the air if they're going to have any chance of getting in scoring position right now. Or that guy right there needs to keep this thing and just make an incredible play. Make a play, yep. We saw him do that time and again last weekend. His head coach Mickey Matthews saw it too as they took care of UMass. A second down with 20 seconds now left here in the half. Rush coming. There's the throw, and it is complete. Great catch by Bosco Williams as he reached behind himself to pull it in. They're going to jump up as they move the sticks. Clock is stopped. And instead of spiking the football, they're going to use their second timeout. Well, that worked well for JMU as they show a sign of life here. At the very least, try to get in a field goal range. This was a quick play, a quick throw, just a bullet. Right down the middle of the field to Bosco Williams. Great pass, great catch. Really finds finds the seam between two defenders. Bosco Williams is a big target. Rodney Landers put it right on that big number five. You see the one timeout remaining, and that leaves them really the entire of the field to work with here with these 14 seconds. We wonder potentially about the range of Dave Stannard. As the place kicker, he has made from 46 this year. And that, what they said, going into last week, was about the outside end of his range, 45, 46 yards. When we asked Mickey Matthews prior to the game how far he would be willing to kick with Standard, he said about 45. He kicked the 46, just barely made it in there. They probably could use another 10 yards to give themselves a comfortable shot at a field goal here. 14 seconds to go in the half. Landers, a little swing pass, and Yancey dancing out of bounds, does a good job of getting out of bounds with the 28. So right now, with eight seconds left in the half, it's a 45-yard attempt. You've got a timeout. Can you get a play done in eight seconds or less and still call the timeout to get the field goal unit on the field? Call a passing play that's close to the uh, sideline. I mean, right now, you can kick it from here. We saw it last week. Call a passing play down here to Patrick Ward. Get him out of bounds with a tick or two left. It would be about a 46-yarder, so they're going to go for it with the timeout on their hip. Landers got to get rid of it. He wants it all. That's going to be incomplete. And with two seconds left in the half, you would imagine that that would be field goal attempt time unless they think you're outside the range, in which case you're going to take another crack at it. See, the issue at hand here is, is you got Dave Standard. He's their short field goal guy. Their long field goal kicker, Jason Pritchard, is their punter, and he's out with a hip flexor. That's why Andy Smith is punting today. And without Pritchard, this is the full extent of Dave Standard's range. Called a 44-yarder from the right hash mark. Hit from 46 here last week. And the last play of the first half. Got a lot of leg, but he pulled it to the left. That's pretty much the way things have gone for anybody wearing purple here in this first half. Wow, look at the demeanor, too. JMU just kind of slowly lagging off the side. All of Appalachian State's team sprinted to that, to that tunnel to go back in. Let's take it down on the field to Murph. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, Coach, obviously a solid first half. A tough place to play. You guys grabbed the momentum early and seemed to just uh, keep it going. Well, we've played well, and we've had some opportunities that we took advantage of, and 
you know, we're, we're playing pretty good right now. We just can't get satisfied with where we are. We're a group, you know, they're a good football team. That whole league's good. It's a, it's a challenge to come up here and play well. What do you tell your guys in the locker room so they don't lose focus in that second half? Well, I think you challenge them. I mean, we're, we got a chance to have a pretty good football team, and you got to go finish the game. You can't play uh, 30, 30 minutes of it and say, well, okay, we got a, a good or a great football team. But if we can finish it up, we can play the second half well, then we'll have a chance to be a pretty good football team. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. There you heard it, guys. They've won a lot of football games. 30 more minutes left in this one. A good JMU team probably going to refocus when they get back in that locker room. We'll see what happens in the second half. Back upstairs, guys. Well, there's a lot of emotion and a lot of excitement coming into this one. And the three-time defending national champs and their superb quarterback took the air out of this entire place. We'll see if some life gets pumped back into the home team or if the dominance continues in the second half. We have reached the break here in Harrisonburg, 21 to nothing. Appalachian State on top. And back with our halftime festivities in just a moment. Today's game is brought to you by West German BMW. West German BMW. WG. Two letters say it all. By Transamerica. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid. And by Black & Decker. Powerful solutions from Black & Decker. Well, the defending national champions have marched in here and set the tone. And we'll see if their defense can do the same to start the second half. As they sit with a 21-point lead, 30 minutes of football left to go. Mataris has it teed up. Crowd hoping for kind of a new beginning here with the new half. And McGee going to start from his own one-yard line. Down the lane. He's going to go if he gets past. Down the sideline. Just the kicker to beat. And he's in for the touchdown. 99 yards. And he sets a flame here in Virginia. This is absolute bedlam. Just what the doctor ordered to get these fans back into the game. Scotty McGee doing what he does best. Electrifying player. Well blocked right up the middle. And he was gone. He's already brought a punt back. Now he's brought a kickoff back for a touchdown over the first three games. And Stannard's extra point is good. So just like that, 13 seconds and one special team play, and you got a ball game again. What an athlete. Middle wedge once again. This is what they like to run. And everything just opens up. Just the kicker to beat. Scotty McGee's speed does the rest. Looked like almost a clip there on Jason Viteris. Here you see it from another angle. I tell you what, JMU's lucky this was not called a clip. Watch Viteris. Wow, that's pretty speedy for a kicker. That was it was close. Yeah, it was close. Could have could have gone either way. But hey, JMU is is on the board for the first time in this game because of that man. I almost got pegged by a ball in pregame. Scotty McGee saved me. Way to go, Scott. You know what? He he's so athletic. The ball was bouncing. It, it hit right in front of me. Bounced over my head. He just about jumped over me and caught the ball. Uh, I, I was very impressed by that. I'm, I'm even more impressed by that kickoff return for a touchdown. Had a 38-yarder a few weeks ago. Um, had all kinds of yardage in the return game last week. That guy, when we talked to him, Jerry Moore, during the week, I said, hey, are you going to kick it away from Scott in the air? Kick it to him. He said, well, we think we can cover this guy. We think we can we can stop him. They had done a great job, did Appalachian State, up until that opening kickoff of the second half in containing Scotty McGee. But you can only contain him for so long. All of a sudden, we've got noise in the building again. All of a sudden, there's an electricity. Let's see how that translates into the way the remainder of the game is played as Hillary takes the kick back, trying to match him. But he's not going to be able to do so as he gets stopped 
out of the 26 yard line. Special teams play for James Madison by Colin Fitzmaurice, a redshirt freshman. Now let's take it down to Murph. Well, guys, coming out of the locker room, I got a chance to talk with Coach Mickey Matthews, and I asked him what uh, I knew he expected a better effort in the first. He, he said, you know what, I wasn't uh, upset about our effort, thought we played well, just made a lot of mistakes in the first half. He said, we need a big play to get back in this, and we need field position. I think he just got his big play to get back in this. Thanks to Scotty McGee. Guys? Now we'll see if the defense now feeds on this and whether momentum has taken a turn. That guy can take momentum away in a second, though, as Edwards tucks and runs and finds the right hold yet again for a gain of more than six yards on his first carry of the second half. Now last year, JMU in the second half of the game against Appalachian State did a lot of stunting and they did a lot of stemming and movement at the line of scrimmage. We saw them earlier in the half and earlier in the game and then just right there, that last play, there everyone's up at the line of scrimmage and then they're backing off. Every time they're doing that, Appalachian State's running the ball. It's working to their disadvantage right now. Edwards on that run just broke the 100-yard mark. His 14th career 100-plus yard rushing game. Second down. Straight option. Oh, maybe it's not a straight option. Wow. As it turns out, it's going to be a loss of yardage on a pass play to Welton. But I guess you could take nothing for granted back there once <laughs> that guy takes off of the football. I'm not sure if that was a broken play or not. You see, Welton's kind of in a pitch relationship. Uh, it was a design play. Made it look like he got out of pitch relationship. They were hoping everyone would converge on Armonte Edwards. But defense, JMU's defense did a good job of assignment football, staying outside the widest man. In that case, was Robert Welton. Home crowd is absolutely alive again on a big third down now. And the throw is incomplete. It was behind Ben Jordan. And the tight end couldn't adjust. So Appalachian State is going to be forced to kick it away. And right now, Mickey Matthews coming out at halftime said they needed a big play. They needed to get better field position for the half. That first half, James started with terrible field position the entire time because of the punting situation. You know, they're, they're lacking their punter. Appalachian State has a good one in Neil Young. Right now, they're going to get this ball back with a short field to play. They're trying to set up a return. And up through the middle, it's McGee again getting his team good field position out to the 38-yard line. And that is where JMU will get their first try offensively here in the second half. We got a ball game again with 12.53 to go in the third. Appalachian State by 14. Well, the first opportunity offensively for James Madison here, and good field position to start with is they will start from the 38-yard line. That's exactly what he's been doing tonight, or hasn't been doing tonight, and has now picked it up. And look at that. One play, and Landers keeping the ball himself has this crowd going berserk. He did it all last week against UMass. It's the first time he's done it tonight. You're, no, you know what? He, you're right. The first time he's pulled it out of that back's belly on the option. He's had a couple plays where they direct snapped it out of the shotgun and he just ran it. All the, all throughout the first half, he was giving it to the back, giving it to the back. And we believe that he would eventually pull it out and run it. There, he sets the tone for the second half with a long touchdown run, doing exactly what he did last week, like you said. The ball has been in the hand of a guy in a purple jersey for 25 seconds now here in the second half. And all of a sudden, we got a one-score game. Unbelievable. We thought this one might be wild before it was done. It took its time getting there, but Rodney Landers has this back to a one-score game with all kinds of time to go. If you came back late for second-half action, you will have missed quite a bit in three in two minutes and 17 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Rodney Landers just went 62 yards. 
Check out the burst. Everyone bid on that fake because that's the way they were doing all first half, giving it to the back. Rodney Landers has a lot of green. And here, I thought he would get caught. I mean, he's running away from defensive backs that are much smaller than he is. This guy is 220 pounds, runs a 4.5. That looked like he might have been setting a new land speed record right there. Amazing. What's amazing is how quickly this has become a game again. Coco Hillary. Got himself a break out across the 30. And made it out to the 35-yard line. That is where Appalachian State will take over. Coco got rocked at the end. Falling forward. Smack. Nice job by Jamaris Sanders, who lost his starting cornerback job from a poor performance last week. He's been moved to a backup safety spot, but he's getting the job done on special teams. Those licks, you know, those licks will wear on you. Coco Hillary's a guy that they like to go to in the pass game when they do pass it. I'll tell you what, he was not happy getting up after that one. If possible, this place just got louder. They've got a call for a timeout as Edwards is not on the same page with where he wants to be offensively. For first charge team timeout of the half. That's big right there. That's a wasted timeout. Let's take it down on the field. Check in once again with Murph. Well, guys, obviously the big plays are good for the scoreboard, but I'll tell you what, as you just mentioned, Scott, maybe the biggest thing is they got this crowd back in the game. Before the game, they told us that if they could have sold 50,000 tickets to this game, they would have sold it out. It is a sold-out crowd, obviously, of purple and gold, and they were taken out in the first half, but as you mentioned, we can barely hear ourselves down here on the sideline right now, and that cannot be good news. It's good news for Appalachian State, guys. Now this whole thing right now is somewhat akin. Let's assume that you're watching a you know a heavyweight boxing match. Now for the first seven rounds, one guy is just completely pounding the other, and then in the eighth round, the guy who's losing comes out, and the guy who was winning takes two standing eight counts. Right. That's what's happening right now. Exactly. And and that the crowd is absolutely whipped into a frenzy right now. They feel as though they can help their team come back and win this game. Looked like he was out of sync, too, but Corman trying to make the best of it, turns it upfield. They get positive yardage, but a little bit more than one. It was Evan McCullough coming up to make the hit. Talk about a tale of two halves right now. What a tale of two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, very exciting thus far. Evan McCullough had the best game of his collegiate career last week. You don't get to be a defending three-time national champ without being able to take a hit. Edwards trying to pitch late. Fortunately for him, he held on to the ball because he took a shot, lost a yard, and it'll bring up third down. Matt Williams. That's, that's a form tackle, folks. Armonte Edwards. You can see that this defense is just playing with a different level of intensity right now. Pat Williams, he's a redshirt freshman. This guy looks the part for sure. Looks like Tarzan out there. Good football player. He's just young. He's one of two young guys playing for all of JMU right now. Makes a big play. Edwards stepping up in the pocket. Pursued. Got rid of it. And it's incomplete. Corman took a heck of a shot and couldn't haul it in. He is slow to get up. This JMU team is invigorated. They are smacking everyone they can smack right now. The intensity is at a new high for this JMU team. On the other side of the ball, right now, if TJ Corman is, is in fact injured on that play, that, that does not bode well either. He's uh, one of two seniors out of this nine deep receiving core for Appalachian State. He started all 15 games last year. Edwards feeling the pressure, steps up. Just gets that thing off barely in time. That is, that is helmet to knee, it looked like. Helmet to knee, Marcus Haywood's knee kind of bent his, uh, bent his head at, a, at an odd angle. He's running off now under his own power, so that's good news. I'll tell you what, 
his whole team has to feel a little like he does right now. This is an avalanche. Scotty McGee is going to try to keep it going. He's back to take the punt from Young. And they kick away from him this time. I wonder if that's by design. McGee thought about running up to try to make a play on it, but it'll be down at about the 31-yard line. Once again, good field position for JMU. If you tuned in late, first half belonged entirely to number one Appalachian State, a 21-point lead in that first half. James Madison came back. McGee took the opening second half kickoff, 99 yards for a touchdown. And then after a three and out, Rodney Landers took the first offensive play, 62 yards to the house. I wonder what they got planned this time. From the 31, first down and 10. For the man in motion, that's Williams. And Landers keeping it himself. Positive yardage again. Put the ball into the belly of the running back. Took it back out again. And he got himself five yards. New look for that offense. They got two backs. They had Holloman back there. They had Yancey back there. They cross-keyed him. Running across. You know, they crossed one another in the backfield. Brought another receiver in motion behind it. Very confusing looking play. Now they're going with that same set again. Expect them to make it look the same to start and run something different. Running out of the straight no huddle. Landers looks like he doesn't like what he sees. And he is making a change. Max getting in a little bit tighter around him now on second down. Kept it himself that time, and that was not the right choice. Not fooling Tony Robertson one bit. Tony Robertson's not playing around. Trying to get his team back, back into this, this thing. Fired up emotionally. Knocked the flat off of him. He cross-keyed it again. Robertson just did not bite at all. That's why he was an honorable mention All-American last year. Really good against the run. Third down. Landers on a sprint out look. Firing and it's picked off. Threw it right to Leonard Love. The nickelback. And a turnover is going to give Appalachian State the football at the JMU 34. Second interception of the night for the Appalachian State defense. That was just another awful interception for Rodney Landers. He threw one in the first half. Got a lot of time because they're moving the pocket. That was just a bad pass. Too low. No way Kirby Long could have caught that thing anyway. Throws it right to Leonard Love. It was actually Appalachian State's leading tackler. There you see he can defend against the pass as well. Let's see whether the momentum is swung back again now. Or not. But a great job of escaping by Edwards as he gets back past the line of scrimmage and turns it into a two-yard pickup before he gets dropped by Marcus Haywood. A two-yard pickup may not seem like a big deal, but when it could have been a 10-yard loss right there. Shelton Johnson had him. But he got away once again. Now the quick throw, and Hillary spinning off a couple of tackles. It's down near the 26-yard line. That'll leave him about two yards shy of the first down. Two yards shy of the first down. They are in, uh, in field goal range right now. Granted, a relatively long field goal. But if I'm Appalachian State right now, it's third and short. Who do you think I'm going to give the ball to? Uh, let me think. It's going straight from center to the guy that's going to We're not. hand it off. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> and Welton spins for first down yardage down to the 21. A five-yard pickup on third and short. <laughs> well, Robert Welton has proven himself a tough inside runner today as well. Once again, cutting it back. You're seeing him cut it back a lot because of that pursuit. JMU's defensive line is very quick, very fast, and they seem to have a tendency to be over-pursuing tonight, opening up that cutback lane. There's Welton again, cutting back again. Not once, but twice, and spinning his way down to the 12-yard line, a pickup of nine yards on first down. He's filling in nicely for Devin Moore, who went down on the first half. Once again, losing contain is the JMU defense. 
That defensive end getting washed down into the thick of things, allowing tight ends, offensive tackles to get to his outside shoulder. That's what Welton likes to see. They'll go in motion now. And flags everywhere. Probably the snap. Ball start, 84. Offense. Five-yard foul. Remains. Well, ben Jordan, who had a couple of catches in the first half, gets called for the second time tonight. Seven fifty-four to go in the third. We got a lot of football left to play. You played football for a long time. How important is it to come down the field where you are right now? You're in the red zone. You haven't been turned away in the red zone yet this year, and at least put up some points to stop the momentum. Well, points will definitely silence this deafening crowd to some degree. That will help the offense get in better sync for Appalachian State, as if they needed it right now. And straight ahead running. And not a whole lot of running to do. There's Devin Radford getting his first carry of the night. So third down coming up. This really feels like football. It's getting a little crisp. Two great teams on the field. This is living, Scott. Could be the biggest game in FCS football all year. We'll see as the year plays out. And there's Welton with the toss. He is close, but he's going to be stopped shy of the first down. Got it to the 13-yard line, but no further. Welton really, that, that was a tough run. He, he really was fighting for that first down. Right here you'll see Pat Williams is in a bind. He has to pick the quarterback or the pitch guy. Picks the quarterback. They get it out to Welton. Struggling, bumping off his own player. Not able to get that first, but now very manageable field goal. And it is going to be a 30-yard attempt for Viteris. Two for three on the year. And he bangs it through to get his team back on the board and stretch the lead back up to 10 points. That's what a team that is a championship caliber team has to do. They got to come down, they've got to answer, and they did. Yes, they did. I, I felt like the, uh, the momentum, obviously, with 14 unanswered points to start the half, was definitely on JMU's side of things. The defense came out. They were really hitting people. They were fired up, excited. And then that option rushing attack really has a tendency to wear a defense down. It's a relentless attack. Both of these teams run it. JMU, you know, during during two a days, during camp, that's what they're seeing all the time. They're seeing this option rushing attack. This is something they're accustomed to. They know how to stop it. They just have not been able to physically get the job done due to the fact that these offensive linemen and tight ends for Appalachian State are able to seal the corner. And Armonte Edwards, Robert Welton, they're able to take advantage of that and bounce everything. Conversely, JMU has not been able to get the corner. That guy was able to get a big burst of speed to make this a game again. And he'd like another opportunity right now as Scotty McGee awaits the kickoff. And they're not kicking to him. So much for the idea we think we can contain him. They kick it short, and that'll be great field position for JMU. Now, this is... Game two of our doubleheader. Game one went to overtime in Philadelphia today. Chris Whitney in the overtime period for Villanova goes in for the score on their first possession in overtime and gives Villanova the lead, but they missed the extra point. However, Bradford Blackman on the first play for Ben in the overtime period gets stripped of the football. Villanova recovers. Ball game. And the... Philadelphia rivals facing off. Villanova wins it at Franklin Field in overtime, 20 to 14, the final. That's Kirby Long. And I was just saying they haven't gotten the edge all night. 
right there. Bring Kirby Long in motion across the formation, hand it off to him, and they sealed the edge. The result, a big first down to start this drive. Long is a wide receiver by trade, but a good burst to the outside, and JMU is moving the football now with under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Here he comes again, and this time Landers going up top, wide open, touchdown! <laughs> he faked to a wide receiver and threw a touchdown pass to a running back. He faked? Exactly. How about that? Kirby Long, so versatile, just burned them around the end for that big first down. Rodney Landers, same motion, same formation, fakes the handoff, then faked as though he was going to run it himself, pulled back out. Appalachian State didn't know where the ball was, where they even were, and running scot-free was Griff Yancey. The touchdown pass to Yancey, an extra point would make this a three-point game. And so it is. Unbelievable. That was a very well set up play, very perfect call for that situation. Set it up with the play before it. Rodney Landers showing he has a nice touch on the ball. We, we saw a similar throw last week to Kirby Long. Rodney Landers, though, great ball handling. Watch this. Fake to Kirby Long. Look like you're going to run back out, set your feet, put it up there. Just nice touch pass, grip Yancey. Big touchdown. Now they're only down by three. How open can you possibly be? Well, that's uh, that was a that was a crazy double fake. I mean, look at that. The defense did they bite? No. Then you fake like you're gonna run. They bite on that. Pull it back out. That is option offense run to perfection. This first time I saw it break a smile tonight. Griff Yancey had a big big game last week. First time we've seen a lot of those guys break a smile tonight, but it's coming here in this third quarter. There was a look of steely determination all night on their faces, and then, as you pointed out, going off at halftime, down yeah. by 21 points, right? just flat disappointment. Right. I, I would have loved uh, just to, to hear what was going on in that locker room. I, I, I was going to say be a fly on the wall, but I, I detest flies, so I would, not, I would not do that. I would have loved to have been a player in that locker room to hear exactly what was going on, because Jan you they, they slowly languidly jogged off the field Appalachian State at the end of that first half they sprinted to that tunnel completely different demeanor now and it's a three-point game who would have thunk it not I and the kickoff from Dixon Wright is going to be fielded short and Pretty good field position now. Starting at the 30-yard line for Appalachian State. This drive right here for Appalachian State. Every drive's huge. But right now, JMU just answered their field goal with the score. And these fans are as raucous as ever. And the defensive line is fired up right now. So you get past that defensive line and get positive yardage by getting into the linebackers in the defensive backfield. Aaron Griffin, the one to stop Edwards there after a pickup of about four yards. Take it. And then just find your hole. Look at the burst. Just gets so low. Almost like he's stumbling. Big rush coming, and that's coming back. This is all coming back. It is going to be a hold. That's the only thing that ended up saving the quarterback. Holding number 63 offense. Ten yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay second down. Daniel Kilgore, we said, trying to save his quarterback. Clearly with the hold on Sam Daniels. Watch Sam Daniels right there. He's there. Wow. Tackled. Sam Daniels, before the game, I got down here a little bit early. I went to KFC, grab a quick bite. In walked Sam Daniels. There were JMU fans in line. They're like, hey, buddy, you got to get to the stadium. What are you doing? It was his twin brother. 
His twin brother was was in KFC. I I didn't know what to make of it. I think the JMU fans were a little taken aback. Fortunately, Sam was not at KFC. He was making plays like that. Second down after the holding call. It's collapsing again, and they got him this time. Ball is loose. It's on the ground. They're trying to figure it out in the pileup. They still haven't said. And the ball will stay with Appalachian State. In talking to Mickey Matthews during the week, he, he felt that the, the defensive line last week against UMass did not have their best game against the pass. They've come out after halftime. They're really getting penetration, getting pressure off the edge. There you see Arthur Motes, J.D. Skolnitzi coming up from an inside, ripping that ball out, causing the fumble. Whoever wins this, this competition up front between JMU's bigger defensive line and the smaller offensive line of Appalachian State will win this game. There's a center, Brett Irvin, who made the key recovery, but it is third down and a bunch. And Edwards, nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. This is like an avalanche. This is James Madison. The strength of their defense is that defensive line. They did not play well last week against the pass. This week in the first half, they certainly did not play well. They, did, they got no pressure on Armonte Edwards, and they also uh, allowed themselves to be uh, you know, washed down and, and gave the corner away. Now, all of a sudden, something clicked on. Well, they got a protection scheme of their own for Young, who booms one away. McGee is all the way back inside his 40-yard line. Trying to make the long trek up field. He does get it back out across the 42. And once again, terrific field position coming for James Madison. Great hit by Cedric Baker on Scotty McGee there. Great field position, though, as you said. CNA Sports tackles high school football with more local games than ever before. All on air, online, and on demand. If you have Comcast, you have the game. Log on to CN8.tv each week for your local matchup. I was watching the Malvern Prep High School game earlier today at CN8. On the 43. There's your fake again to Long. This time, Landers keeps it himself. And yardage out across the 47-yard line. Pierre Banks makes a tackle. JMU's last three plays have all been out of that, that formation and that motion. That is what makes an option attack such as theirs so difficult to stop because there are always options, different offshoots. Start out, starts out the same, ends up different. Landers looking like that cool customer that we have known him to be back there here in the second half. He hands it off this time to Long. And on the sprint, we got a flag on the play. Went up to make the stop was Mark Legree. We'll see about the flag that's going to be against JMU. Going to be a hold. Holding. Number 17 offense. 10 yards from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay second down. A few moments ago, Yancey celebrating a touchdown. Now he's called for a hole that's going to set him back. That hurts. Big penalty. They had a nice game. They were in a manageable third and short. That's quite a look. <laughs> that was me when I got done playing football. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a year when, after, after I after I got done playing. I had a year where I just ate everything in sight. That was me, and I was not inflatable. That was actually flesh on me. <laughs> so they move it back to the 40-yard line. It is second down. Landers play looked busted. Well, maybe not. As it turns out, no gain. It's going to bring up third down. Jack Roman. Really hurt JMU last year helping to make the play. Malcolm Bennett in on it as well. Malcolm Bennett, he is a house. I, they say he weighs 279 pounds. Does that look like 279 to you? This guy transferred from Georgia Military College. He's, he's, he's big. 
He is wide and husky and explosive. Tough to block inside. Got to get down to the 47 yard line at Appalachian State to move the sticks. And on third down, Landers throwing for all he's worth, but there's nobody home. Long stopped the route, got it about the 40 yard line. Landers was throwing for all of it up on top, nobody near it. Yeah, that was Kirby Long kind of freelancing, I think. Looked as though Dominique McDuffie, the freshman cornerback, was doing a pretty good job in coverage. Long just felt like, hey, I'm not going to be able to beat this guy deep. Maybe I'll, you know, stick my foot in the ground, come back to the ball in the hopes that Rodney sees me doing that. He didn't. Oh, big punt. And a fair catch. Waved for and taken by B.J. Frazier. And the ball is going to be inside the 20 once again, just outside the 16-yard line. Next Saturday, number two, Richmond Spiders taking on the Wildcats at number 19, Villanova. Richmond continuing to climb in the polls. It's highest ranking in over 20 years. It's only action next Saturday, live at 3.30 on CNA. Now, in that game that we saw that they beat Penn in today, uh, in that overtime period, where was Antoine Young? I'm not sure. He had been playing earlier in the game. Yeah. Part of the homework you and I will be doing this week. Yes. Great cutback running right there. Oh, goodness. What an ability to stop and go from Armani Edwards as he gets terrific yardage out to the 24 before being stopped by Jamie Venning. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just insane. Look at look at the stop on stop. the dime ability. There was one stop, stop. another stop, stop, <laughs> double stop, another spin stop. <laughs> wow, fun to watch. Second down and three. This time a straight ahead handoff for first down yardage. Appalachian State trying to reclaim what it is they were doing so well in the first half. Back on the ground to Welton. That Robert Robert Welton has shown his power inside and his want to. You can tell it that, that, that uh, he's going to fall forward. He's going to twist and turn, give up his body, try to punish some people along the way. But if he breaks free, he could go all the way. He's got a 72-yarder to his credit this year. The number of first downs, 14 to five. Oh, oh man. I'm telling you, that guy could escape two guys in a phone booth. <laughs> yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you there. This is DJ Brandon coming coming free. Oh, my. That, that was just sick. I, that was uh, amazing. Double stop, explosion, lateral quickness, lateral speed is just... I've never seen anything like that. Maybe even more amazing is after one team won a half, 21 to nothing, another team used this to win the quarter, 21 to three. We got 15 minutes to go. Don't go anywhere. Number one and number five, duking it out. Jerseys. Griffin was the one who got there and stayed right with him as he throws Edwards for a loss all the way back to the 25. Darren Griffin did a great job of attacking Armonte Edwards. Armonte Edwards attempted to do that cut back, the jump cut. He even jumped backwards on a cut that time. JMU was pursuing. There was a cut back, but they did a great job of rallying, getting back to the ball. And Garen Griffin, rather than running to him and stopping and breaking down, uh, fearing that, that cut ability, he ran through him. Third down and long. He wants to throw it. Firing downfield, it is picked off. Intercepted by Darius Ramsey, who just became a starter this week. 
He read the quarterback all the way, closed on the football, and now JMU's got a short field to work with in the Appalachian State 46. Well, you saw Rodney Landers throw a couple bad picks earlier. This is also a bad pick. Double coverage, you got the safety collapsing. Good, good coverage by Darius Ramsey. He's right there, poorly thrown ball. As you mentioned, he just became a starter this week. He was a starter for most of 2007, lost the job, then just regained it back. I think he solidified that now. 46 yards away from the end zone and what would be an improbable lead in this game. Landers sprinting out and firing complete. Patrick Ward on the far sideline, down inside the 25. That was a nice throw on the move. I thought he was gonna tuck that thing and run it. Last week, we saw that same play set up. Rather than throwing this ball, you can see he's got some green turf to run on. Just sticks it right on Patrick Ward for a big first down. I did misspeak. I said inside the 25, I believe. It's inside the 35-yard line. First down from the 33. Landers sprinting out again, got a man there, and throws it incomplete. Kirby Long was calling for the football and tried to turn and run with it before he caught it. And a pretty good close and defensive play made by Leonard Love kept that from being a big gainer. And that would have been a big gainer. Leonard Love completely committed to knocking that ball away. Had that been caught, could have been a touchdown. Instead, it's second down and 10. It was a laugher has become a tremendous football game. And with the man in motion, Landers keeps it himself. Barreling ahead with that big frame down to the 26-yard line. They set up a third down at short. Pierre Banks on the tackle for Appalachian State. Landers showing his oxymoronic quarterback bruising style. Diving forward, carrying a couple tacklers with him. It's another guy on the other side who has a slightly different style of running, but certainly every last bit is effective. As Madison has not converted well, as you can see on third down tonight. They need one here because they are just at the edge of potential field goal range. And Landers, moving the pack forward, is going to end up, it looks like, about a yard shy. I'll tell you what, with the kind of momentum you've got right now, the question is, do you try for the long field goal or do you just ride this thing and try to convert? I would guess that JMU is going to try to go for this. Last year, they went for it four times on fourth down. They converted three of them. That kept the ball out of Appalachian State's hands. The two for four on fourth down conversions this year. They've got Holloman and Yancey in the backfield now. Look for the outside zone here. It's a long one. First back through. Yancey's got the first down. And I was wrong. Last, last week, they were running out of that eye set. They were sweeping the ball, circling that defense. Looks like Appalachian State watched that film, perhaps. Did not play the dive. Last week, Griff Yancey was the one carrying the ball from the eye. And he had Jamal Sullivan blocking in front of him. Now with Eugene Holloman back, they've got a couple different backs in there with Eugene Dot in the eye. Running some different plays. The fake is to Holloman, and Landers' great escape ability gets collared, and that's going to bring a flag in. Big penalty. He got a couple of yards, but that's going to be a face mask. That's a big penalty by DJ Smith. Or was it Jacques Roman? Well, they're both great, great linebackers, very aggressive, returning starters, all Americans. Perfect. Yeah. On the defense. Landers trying to get his his arm his, his shoulders around. There you see, it looks like Jacques Roman. Kind of horse collared him. You can't grab the helmet in any way when they're outside the tackle box. And again, although he did not have full frontal of the face mask, he did have hold of the underside of the helmet. 
And by the way, Robertson, you saw him pulling up as he tried to catch Landers. He just limped off the field, and he's being worked on on the sideline right now. His quarterback is looking on, hoping that he's not going to have to go in trailing in this game. But it's first down and goal now from the eight. Landers straight ahead and down to the four. I would not want to tackle him. Look at him. I, looking at him in warm-ups without the the pads on and stuff, I, I thought for sure he was bigger than 220. I asked Mickey Matthews. He said, yeah, he's 220. But you could strike a match on his abs. He takes his shirt off. Everyone's jealous. This guy is put together. So That's not that, that, guy, guy. that guy looks a little <laughs> little overly husky. Maybe <laughs> a little morbidly obese for a canine. But Rodney Landers is certainly built. Toss to Holloman. Foot race to the corner. And James Madison has taken the lead. Here in the fourth quarter, they have come all the way back. The, the fans, the stadium is shaking and rocking. And that was a well-designed play right there. Big dive and, and pitch it. Appalachian State bit. Standard right on through. The lead is now four for a team that was down 21 points at halftime. Yeah, there's your chest bump. That's probably a pretty good time to do it if you're Eugene Holloman after sitting last week and being injured. He comes back in, and here is the cherry on top of the Sunday for the comeback. Looked pretty easy only because it was. JMU firing on all cylinders now as they've taken the lead here in the fourth. Time number one, Appalachian State led 21 to nothing. We've got 10:48 to go. The number five team in the country now is staking their claim to the top spot. 28 to three. This half in favor of James Madison. 46-yard drive after the interception. A 3:25 off the clock. kickoff and right near the sideline but did not go out and Hillary taken down from behind in pursuit on special teams was Doug McNeil let's take it down on the field to Murph yeah on a very loud JMU sideline right now everybody is very excited right behind me to the right you can see the offense has just come over the field what a confident group they are right now one message and one message only don't stop playing and continue to play as a team that's what they're saying over and over again here on the JMU sideline but they are feeling pretty pretty good right now guys and you can understand why Defense has been fired up all night. They've still got to deal with Armani Edwards with 10.42 left in the game. And he's throwing right away. It's going to be first down yardage to Josh Johnson, who caught a touchdown earlier tonight. And he's out to the 38-yard line. Darius Ramsey really gave a lot of cushion there. Not sure if that was a breakdown in coverage or what. You had Pat Williams running into the screen late. Darius Ramsey. Wow, that, that's bad coverage. Keeping it himself. Edwards sprinting, lost his footing, it looked like, on the cut. May have been tripped, and he got himself three yards on first down. First half. And quieter here in the second. As we cross 10 minutes left to go in this one. And the fans who made the drive from North Carolina. You can tell there's a lot of concern there right now as they trail for the first time in this game. Edwards has pressure coming and throws complete. It's Corman with the catch in JMU territory down at the 46-yard line. And another first down for Appalachian State. And both teams getting a little worked up right now. We saw T.J. Corman get, get in the defender's face. Armani Edwards once again buys some time, puts it on the money. Marcus Haywood takes him down. 
and then a gang tackle. Corman took exception to it. The man in motion to the far side. They're just clearing the way for their quarterback to run. And positive yardage again on first down as he picks up nearly three. Monty Edwards, so much has been made of his ability on the field and just the kind of student he is. He's just an all-around guy. Talking to Jerry Moore during the week, he was saying uh, down there in, in Boone, North Carolina, there was a local boy who was sick. Armani Edwards decided to take it upon himself to go to that kid's house. Took him to dinner because the kid was a fan. Wow. He's in trouble here. Oh, that might be a late hit, and it is. Definitely costly. Sam Daniels, it looked like lost track of where he was. And I guess if you're pursuing that guy all night, when you finally do get him in the line of sight, you're going to take your shot. But this is going to be a costly one. Yeah, that was without After a doubt. The play was over. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number 58 on the defense. 15 yards and an automatic. This is just e egregious. I, he is really, I, that, I mean, runs into a coach, runs into other players. He, he's the whole way to the fence. I mean, he was running full bore, and granted, Sam Daniels, 270, 275. It's hard to slow down that sort of momentum. But uh, I, I think the thing that got him was he, you know, extended the arms, he laid the hit, lowered the boom, and, and followed through on it. Crowd disagrees, but it's clearly a penalty. Clearly a penalty. Clearly very costly as well. That puts him down at the 24-yard line with eight and a half minutes left. And Welton coming near side, breaking tackles inside the 20. Still on his feet. Lost the football. He lost the football. James Madison has it as Griffin comes away with the loose ball. Oh, my. What a big defensive stop. Does anybody have a feeling of reverse deja vu right here? <laughs> exactly. Last year, JNU driving to win the game, fumbled the ball away inside the 10-yard line with a minute to play, lost the game. Here you see Robert Welton. He, this was a great run, great cutback, missed tackle by Abdul Wahid, and then fighting for extra yardage. The ball ripped out by Jamie Venney, recovered by Garen Griffin. When, when a back is fighting for extra yards, that's when they're most vulnerable to having that ball stripped by an additional defender. Exactly what happened there. Benny was going after that ball from the moment he got there and just would not quit ripping at that arm right. until it finally came in. And maybe that's why Robert Welton was able to continue to, you know, proceed downfield. Guys were going for the ball rather than going for the tackle, and it paid off for JMU. Last year in the playoff game, JMU did a great job of playing keep away from the Appalachian State offense. That's what they've got to do right now with under eight minutes left to go. Holland, a good gain on first down. Landers falling forward for maybe a couple more. Should have second down. down. Watch how quickly Venny gets his hand on the arm and how long he stays here. He's yeah, already Benny's, on it right here. Venny's trying to grab at that ball. Hanging, hanging, hanging. Let's see if he's... Rip. Let's see if he's if the ball comes out before his knees down. Yes, the ball is out before his knees down. That is a fumble. Not as if it matters now because JNU has the ball. But if there was some question as to whether or not that was definitely a fumble, there you have it. Conclusive proof. We get later along in this one, maybe a big third down here with just over seven minutes left to go. Landers has an escort. And he is going to be close. He got himself a first down. Just down to the 24-yard line. For the spot of the football, he should have it. And he does. Wow, that's a big first down right there. I did not think that the blocking was sound enough for him to get that first. From up here, it looked like that was just a mass of humanity wearing white in front of him. He turned it upfield and just burrowed his way through the Appalachian State defense on that play for a big first down. So a chance to move the ball and use more time. 
Solomon. Got himself out across the 25. A little bit more than a yard on first down, but that clock keeps moving. There has been nothing there today for these backs. Aside from that reverse out fake dive pitch to Holloman for the touchdown, there has been nothing going. You know, with these straight ahead dives and that sort of thing. He and Griff Yancey, we haven't seen Jamal Sullivan, who has that thumb apparatus on his hand. Rodney Landers has been the rushing attack. Under six minutes to go, you got a second down now and nine. That's Landers keeping it himself, hanging out of the football and getting a gain of about four yards out to the 30. Another third down coming up. And this Appalachian State defense is really stiffening up right now. You can see this is this is a championship team. You know, they, they do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. And this defense, last year when these two teams played, the Appalachian State defense was 87th in the nation against the run. Does not look like it tonight, does it? They gotta come up big here right now on a third down and four as we close in on five minutes left to go. Landers throwing, complete first down. Mike Cross in the tight end. What a great play. If, you, if you're in third and medium like that and you're playing linebacker, you have to bite. You have to bite on the play fake. You have to come up and make a stop. As a result, your tight end comes clean. That area that the linebackers are supposed to be covering is that hook curl area right off the ball. That's where they need to get to to cover in man or zone. And when they bite on the fake, you can't cover. He can take all the time he wants to before snapping this ball. Play clock down out of 10. Holloman sprinting and coming clear. It's a foot race. Caught from behind inside the 20 by Mark Legree, but that just blew the lid off it. 4.23 to go, and JMU's got an opportunity now to maybe put this game away. I was just saying there was nothing going on for the backs up inside today. JMU's offensive line, someone let them know. They just opened up a great hole for Eugene Holloman. Pulling the backside guard, man blocking. Does a great job of reading it, staying tight to that, that kick out by the guard. Wow. Hey, Mark Legree, fantastic job of you know, chasing that guy down. Eugene Holloman's a 4 4 40 guy. Mark Legree has had a terrific ball game. Landers keeping it himself. Turn in the corner. And shoved out of bounds inside the five yard line, down at the three. 3.44 to go. If they go into the end zone right now, it becomes a two-score game. Eugene Holloman scored on this. Actually, last week had a play exactly like this where he went out of bounds right by the cone. Just using that raw athletic talent to outrun defenders and gain some serious yardage. This JMU offense right now is, is clicking. Ex I, night and day from, from the first half. Night and day, the first half, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't gain more than a yard of carry. Now all of a sudden, big plays here, big plays there. Number five team in the country, leading number one and trying to take a step toward putting it away. First down and goal, Landers stopped shy of the goal line. Maybe a yard. They don't mind using a little time here. And remember, before their first offensive play of the second half, Appalachian State took a timeout so they can only stop the clock twice. Yeah, that's almost, you know, running the ball right here, as JMU will do, I would think. Even if they don't get in, that almost works to Appalachian State's disadvantage right now. They're gonna run this play clock the whole way down to zero before they snap it. It's at nine right now. Seven, six, five, four. Landers knows exactly where it is. And he knows where the end zone is too. Oh. 2.31 to go.
that. <laughs> Talk about quickness. Jeez. He snapped that ball at zero and then went zero to 60 in a split second. Reverse fields. Quavian Lewis, the defensive end, just had no chance at stopping that. 87-yard drive, and now it's an 11-point game. James Madison is two and a half minutes away from getting the revenge they've been waiting for since last year. Trying to knock off number one. They've got to hang on for another 231 after a stunning second half. This game has lived up to every last bit of the advanced billing. Neil Anders in the second half, 168 yards of total offense after 44 yards in the first half. His team was down 21 to nothing at halftime. They are now up 11 with 2.31 left to play. Rodney Landers on that last touchdown took just a, an epic jab step. One quick jab step. You, using the basketball terminology, that's what got him in the end zone. So a short pooch kick now. They want to avoid the possibility of any kind of a big return here. They may not be able to avoid it. And the up man in kick coverage, Richard Long, a freshman, gives Line. Appalachian State terrific field position. Linebacker showing some speed. Watch this jab step. Boom! Everyone bites. Wow, Quavian Lewis. He's fast too. He's a 4-4 guy. But that reaction time. It, it, I guarantee Rodney Landers knew exactly what he was doing. That was a design play. They knew the defense would bite because they had to. He just ran it to perfection. Remember, we're talking about the three-time defending national champs. And the last, the last team to win the national championship before Appalachian State. Is James Madison. There you go, Scott. So now Edwards finds the out and is very close to first down yardage on the catch by Josh Johnson. More importantly, stopping the clock without the use of a timeout. Clearly, you can do the math sitting there at home, but you need a touchdown, a two-point conversion. You need the ball back and a field goal to force overtime. That's a lot of ground to cover at 214. Edwards trying to throw up top. Nobody there. Johnson got stopped on his route by Evan McCullough, and it falls incomplete. Teams do not throw to Evan McCullough's side. Last week, UMass made the mistake. One time, he came up with one of the most athletic interceptions I've ever seen. Armonte Edwards knows how good Evan McCullough is. That was a, a desperation throw right now, just trying, to, just trying to get rid of it. I got to think you look Coco Hillary's way. If you've got the time to throw it, look down the field. Oh, my. Johnson is inside the five. He came wide open. The ball's at the four-yard line with two minutes left. Limping off the field. He got hit. It looked like in the back. If right the throw had been in front of him, it's a touchdown. Right between the free safety and Evan McCullough. Marcus Haywood probably needed to get over there to stop that. Bang and toward the end zone. Close to the goal line, but not quite there is Welton. And the clock moves with 145 left to go. This is furious. I, I can't even keep up with this game right now. This is a furious pace. This is absolutely amazing. Great game. And a, a, a great uh, great hit that last play by, by Marcus Haywood, the play before, forgive me. And these teams are getting after it out there. So timeout is being called for by Appalachian State. That'll leave them with one, but they've got to get in here with 141 left to go. And we told you about the two quarterbacks you were going to be seeing here tonight. Well, you saw them on display. The guys we're talking about, of course, Rodney Landers, the CAA's top returning rusher from last year. Last year's playoff game against Appalachian State. 124 yards passing, but 129 yards on the ground in that one-point loss. Armani Edwards had a terrific season last year. He missed four and a half games. He managed to throw for over 1,900 yards, rushed for almost 1,600. And running and scrambling in last year's game against JMU, he had 132 yards and three touchdowns. But tonight he's got 109, has not gotten into the end zone yet. 
And I, I say yet because this game's not over yet. You're right. You never know. But Armani Edwards this evening has really thrown the ball well. Uh, you, he's taken his team the whole way down the field here. Granted, it was a short field, but man, he's he's throwing the ball pretty well, running the ball even better. The guys on his team believe in him, though. Both these quarterbacks. That's what's most important. All right, buckle it back up. Here we go. 145 left. Second and goal from the two. And the give through the middle for the touchdown to Welton. With 142 left. Two-point conversion coming now on the attempt for Appalachian State. Champions do not go away. No way. This Appalachian State team is a team that only knows how to do one thing, and that's win. I mentioned earlier that two players on this team, only two players, linebacker Pierre Banks, nickel Billy Riddle, were, not on, were, were on the team in 2004 when they did not win. I got to put all my money on Edwards with the ball right now. He's trying to avoid trouble. Trying to get in. He got in. The conversion is good. He took off from outside the two-yard line, flew into the end zone, and the issue is still in doubt now with 142 left. The crowd cannot believe their eyes. Everyone was covered. Armani Edwards looking downfield, looking, looking, buying time. Here you see Robert Robert Welton going inside. Similar play that he, as, as what he scored on earlier. He's been doing damage inside today. Look at this. Everyone's covered. Man to man down here. And that's part of the problem. Defensive backs and man to man. I was wrong. He was almost at the four yard line when he took off. With two wow. feet flat on the ground. What an amazing athletic play. And now. 142 left. You've only got one timeout. You've got to try the onside kick. Let's see where he took off from here. It's his only option. It was almost the fall. Oh, four. over the top. Skying. Really great body awareness. Twisting his body in the air. Athletic. Gymnastic. Just superb. So now you've got... Your onside kick play ready to go to try to get the ball back and see if you can get this game tied or for that matter maybe take the lead. And you've got your hands team on the field for James Madison. Right now. Appalachian State. <laughs> this is the game. This is the game right now folks. JMU knows that Appalachian State cannot touch the ball before it goes 10 yards. Those up guys for JMU need to just, as soon as that ball's kicked, they need to run forward and try to pick off every guy in that Appalachian State line. Every guy in white should be picked off by the front guys from JMU. The front line there, they shouldn't even be thinking about the ball. You got Mike Cawson back here, Bosco Williams, that's their job to catch it. Front line, just run full speed and try to pick someone off so they can't get the ball. It's set up and ready to go as Terrace has it. On the tee at the 30. Onside kick, trying to get it back for Appalachian Mark State. Marcus Haywood's foot is over the line. Officials are looking at it. They're looking right at him. And he there's moved a kick. before the ball was kicked. Now there's a flag on the play. They recovered the onside kick, but the flag went up with the kick, and I think... I don't know what he was doing. But oh, wait a second now. What difference would that make? It's going to be, end up being an Appalachian State one way or another here. That's how that flag had to come. It had to. I'm Re not sure about this. The recovery was made. And now they're sorting out what that flag would have been. And we're going to wait for the official's call with 140 to go. Number 34 on the receiving team was offside. He was. To enforce a five-yard foul and re-kick. Exactly. You said. He lined up offsides. His foot was over the line. And what was he? And then he moved before the ball was kicked. I mean, I can understand being on edge, trying to make a play, being excited. But geez, be smart, Marcus Haywood. Again. This is the game we're talking about. This is the number one team in the nation. 
And we watched the officials looking straight down the line. And as soon as that ball was kicked, the flag went flying in yeah. the air. I mean, his JMU teammates need to tell him, hey, buddy, you know, the, the, line, the line's there for a reason. We're not allowed to go past it or be on it. There it is. You can see it. See Marcus Haywood right, right there. The third from the top right on, on the, the front line. His foot is on the line. And then, well, I guess he moved right when it, right when it was kicked. But he lined up offsides. He's not offside this time. One more try at it now for Appalachian State. Five yards closer. Here they come. Big bounce, and it's recovered. James Madison gets it. Drew does it, the backup quarterback. And that should do it. 1.40 to go. And Appalachian State can only stop the clock once. Drew does a great job of blocking. You know, he's up there. I doubt he was one of the guys who was supposed to be picking off an Appalachian State player. Normally in that front line, you got guys who are just going to go ram their heads into someone. That was one of my jobs, actually. The hands team, it's called. But they would put me on there just to run into people. Drew Dudzik's up there because he does have good hands. And he showed it right there. Great job of getting on that ball like a like like a ground ball almost that bounces up, takes a bad hop, grabbed the ball, got down on it. His teammates covered him. That's the game. All they got to do is kneel. Because once again, there's only one timeout left in the tank. And Landers will dive on the ball after running for a couple of steps. Remember, Appalachia can stay, stay can stop it once, and they will here. If you start doing the math in terms of how much time is left in this game, I don't think it's possible for Appalachian State to get the ball back. It, it would have been possible had they not burned that time out at, you know, before they even ran a play in this half. Well, actually, I don't, I'm not totally sure on that. I need to get my calculator out. I'm not a math guy. But turnover, turn, geez, turnovers, timeouts are important. Playing smart is important. Oh, and injured. burning that timeout was not smart. Injured player down on the field. I think that's Anthony Williams. It is. Junior out of Concord, North Carolina. All-American player last year. Nice crowd right now. Boy, did they get to see a whale of a football game here tonight. It looked like we had 30 minutes of... Kind of ho-hum coming in the second half if JMU didn't turn it on. Well, they turned it on all right. Scotty McGee may have had the most important kick return in one single season ever. Sure. Turned the tide. Turned the entire game around Completely with that one changed moment. changed everything. Again, you take a knee here. And they re-rack on the play clock. He's trying to take a little time off if he can, and does. So the play clock will start here, and it goes at 40. Now, a lot of times people say, hey, if a team's playing at home, you give them three points. Wow. Is this... The crowd seems to think that this is one of those stop-the-clock type... Convenient injuries. Fabian Lewis, the junior out of Troy, Alabama. Second player in a row who is down now for Appalachian State. So he limps off. Now remember the clock at 123, the play clock at 29, or 25, I should say. This is going to get you down under a minute left to go. So in theory, you still might have to release the football. Took as much time as they could, under a minute left to go. Wow. Leonard's exposed himself very briefly there to Dominic McDuffie coming from the blind side. But you got about an 11 second differential between game and play clock. I can't imagine a scenario in which you'd want to punt the ball. 
and take that risk of everybody coming at you, but they're going to have to. You, you can't a, give up the ball at the 41 yard line. There's a 10 second difference here, 11 second difference between the play clock and the game clock. They're going to have to take a timeout with zero seconds on the on the play clock, and they got to punt it. And they have to. And where does the drama come in there? Because you've got a punter who's had difficulty getting it away quickly enough. Yeah, this is uh, wow. So 12 seconds left. They take the timeout. And so now you got to hope that you get a good snap and you get a kick away. The biggest punt of Andy Smith's life right here. Re remember, JMU put in a new a new punting formation this week. We'll see if it pays off. Well, I'll tell you what, if they have bear, this is going to be big bear. Next Saturday, number two, Richmond Spiders taking on the Wildcats at number 19, Villanova, who had a thrilling overtime win earlier today in the first half of our college doubleheader here on CN8. Richmond continuing to climb in the polls. It's highest ranking in over 20 years. Catch us next Saturday. We'll be there on the main line outside of Philadelphia, live at 3.30 on CN8. <laughs> they had a special grizzly bear package to go in for the... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And, and, and they're, they're not putting the ball. Is he going to run back and take a safety? Can you run 12 seconds off? <laughs> I don't know. I guess. I mean, if you're Rodney Landers, you can you can run back to the, the end zone. And, and if you, perchance, tripped or lost the football? I don't know. I, I, I think he can outrun that defense given that he's got a five-yard head start. Hopefully he won't trip. Right. If you're a JMU fan, I, I, this is just a, a real predicament right here. The, the fact that somehow when when all seemed lost, that we didn't think that there was any way possible Appalachian State could get the ball back. Granted, we're not math majors, but well, the thing is, you can't just fade back, fade back, try to run out the time. And if you happen to get tackled, that's it, because if there's a second left, there's a field goal attempt, right? You're giving up the ball at the spot that you give it up. So if you've committed to running straight back, you're running all the way back to the end zone and taking a safety. Well, right now, Mickey Matthews is saying, you know what? My best player on the field, Rodney Landers, we're going to let him handle this thing. His job We'd rather to... not put the ball in the hands of our, our young backup punter, Andy Smith. His job is to kill 12. Oh, his job is to punt it. Wow. How about that? Wow. The quick kick. And it's perfect. And it comes to a stop and gets down. The time runs out. What a great ball that was. And look, there's purple and gold everywhere down on the field as the fireworks go off overhead. Number five has knocked off number one. Absolutely stunning. Second half for JMU. And a stunning last play. Appalachian State did not expect it. Uh, I did not expect it. We were wondering what they were going to do. How is this going to work? And it's just bedlam. More and more and more bodies out onto that field to celebrate. James Madison has knocked off Appalachian State, beating number one, 35 to 32. <laughs> this is uh, this is what it's all about. This is what college football is all about. It really matters to everyone involved. Winner, win or lose. I mean, the, the 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 outpouring of emotion from these fans tonight really had an impact. You you talk about teams playing away, teams playing home. They say, hey, it's a field goal advantage playing at home. Right now, JMU won by a field goal. I would, I would venture to say with the involvement of this JMU crowd today, maybe it was worth more than a field goal. You know, with all those false start penalties on Appalachian State, particularly in that first half, trying to get accustomed to the level of noise, it's just, uh, you know, you got you to hand it to everyone, all 11 players on each side of the ball for JMU, but also that 12th player. Let's take it down on the field and that wave of bodies at well, Wide Murph. All right, thank you guys. I'm with quarterback and I guess now punter Rodney Landers. First of all, tell us about that last play. What did Coach say to you guys? Coach just said, get it off. You know, do whatever it takes just to get the punt off. He said, the game's over as soon as I kick it. 
I asked Coach at halftime what he said to you guys in the locker room. He said, just keep your heads up. What did he really say to you guys in there? Hey, he said we need to get our act together. You know, we, we came out early, and, you know, we didn't handle the moment like we needed to. You know, I, I think you can come out and you want to beat a team so bad, and, you know, you just don't execute. And we didn't execute in the first half, but I, I don't know what to say about my team. We came out in the second half. Scotty sparked us, and the crowd was behind us. We got the win. And what about this crowd? Oh, I love them. They're going they're crazy. They stuck with us the whole time. I love them. All right, Rodney, thanks a lot. Congratulations. What a great game. Let's send it back upstairs to Scott. A wild, wild celebration going on down there. Look at that. Just take a look at the total number of bodies on the field and the mass celebration. This has been a long time coming. You got to go all the way back to last November when they came up one point short against Appalachian State and then went on and watched the Mountaineers win a national championship. Tonight they got it a 21 point hole, never quit, and number five beats number one. Let the celebration continue, and I'm sure it will for an awful long time here tonight. 35-32 the final, back with more in just